looks like we're not live yet. <laughs> you seeing anything? You are? Not seeing it on. Oh, I think we are live. I don't see it on my end, but it looks like we are. Woohoo! Hey guys, welcome. So my name is Marina. I'm the founder of Creatively. I'm joined here by my husband, Alex. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and we are streaming from Queens, New York on a Tuesday. Um, we have a couple of people joining. So if you guys are joining, welcome. Please say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're from. Let us know what you're drinking tonight. Let us know if you're a first time painter. Um, and we'll give it about 10 minutes or so to set up. And in the meantime, I'll go over my setup here and you guys can grab your drinks and do whatever else you gotta do. So tonight, we are going to be painting this lovely painting called City of Lo Love. <laughs> that was. Oh, I tried so, really hard to figure out how to pronounce that it. That was oh, City so of Love. Just the most eloquent. Of Louvre. It's of Louvre. Um, so we do have um, a design outline available for this painting on our website. Alex is going to link it in the chat and you're welcome to get it it's um, already been pinned it's already been pinned thank you gotcha <laughs> and the design outline is totally optional so if you want to um hand draw it free draw it please you're more than welcome to do so i definitely encourage that um, but if you want to use the design outline you're more than welcome to as well we're going to be using it just because we want to focus on the painting and not the drawing um, and we definitely don't consider it cheating. So it's all part of the learning process. Right? It's definitely not cheating. Definitely not it's cheating. It's definitely not cheating. So we have some people joining from Texas, from Colorado. Let us know where Georgia. you're from. What yeah. you're drinking. What you're drinking. Oh, we First have someone from First time with Queens. us. First time painters. Adrian Ryan's originally from Queens, New York. What? What? So, Alex, I'm going to go through my setup. Are you ready? I you think just, it's that time. You just ignored all the fun questions that I tried well, to Well, I already, I already asked those questions before. When? You were paying attention. I, I certainly was not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we have a 12 by 12 canvas tonight. Check. We have our palette paper facing shiny side up. Muy importante check very important we also have a very limited color palette tonight we only have four colors so we have white phthalo blue red and yellow i put an emphasis on the phthalo blue i like it check <laughs> and if you guys aren't using phthalo blue and you have a lighter blue you're probably going to need a little bit of black because the blue that we're going to be using needs to be pretty dark so then we also have Two, two and a half brushes. I might be using a third one. I'm not sure yet. Maybe not. So we have our size 16 flathead brush. And then we have a round size four brush as well. And we might use an even smaller brush if we want to get a little crazy and a little detailed. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's a 10-4 check. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But um, we also have our cup with water. Very clearly important. Clearly labeled, labeled paint, paint water. water. Pro and tip. Then, pro clearly tip. labeled. Well, the pro tip is to keep them separate. Keep your and drink cup and your... clearly labeled. And clearly labeled. We'll take it. Okay, and then we also have a paper towel. And then we have a lot of items on the left side over here. So we have our, so this is our design outline tonight. And again, if you guys are joining late, you can grab this off of our website, 
creativelyboxed.com. Um, Alex has it linked in the chat, so you could just click that link and you could grab it there. Totally optional, it does make it easier. Um, and I just wanna mention that this painting looks a little bit intimidating at first, but it's super easy, especially if you use the design outline. So don't worry, we're gonna get through it together and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we have our reference photo here. And then we also have our step-by-step uh, -step instructions, which also comes with a design outline, if you grab it off my website. And then we also have a piece of graphite paper, which check. we're gonna be tracing. Thank you, Alex. Wow, <laughs> one check for all of these. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to keep it nice and efficient. <laughs> and concise, nice and concise. There you go. And then I also have a colored pencil here. So I'm gonna be using this for the tracing. Um, and this is a pro tip, use a colored pencil if you can, just so you could see what you're tracing. But otherwise you could use a regular pencil, you could use a pen, you could use a crayon. A little DIY you know, item, I like whatever. it. What else? I like it. Oh, and then most importantly, last but not least, we do have our adult beverage over here. So mine is um, in theme. With tonight, it's a red Bordeaux wine. I like it. <laughs> I'm a fan of Bordeaux. I am too. And always on a Tuesday, drinking red wine, you know, where we're turning it up. I like the enthusiasm already. <laughs> and Alex, what about you? I decided to go to an old classic, and that is... Mr. Jameson, he and I decided to have a little visit. I don't know if this is in theme, but we'll it's take it. It's not in theme, but I felt bad, like, f fibbing and saying that I was having... Drinking a fancy red wine? Some, something like that. <laughs> okay, so I am just checking the chat real quick. Do we have anyone internationally joining us? Where's the Canada crew? Okay, I'm seeing someone from British Columbia... Francie, welcome. We have New Jersey in the house. We have Texas in the house. Woohoo, welcome guys. So if you're just joining, please say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're from. Let us know what you're drinking tonight. Um, any first time painters? Ontario, Canada in the house. Love it when we go international. <laughs> okay. We got a, a, an original fellow, fellow Conrad. Glad Issa. Welcome, guys. So I'm going to give it just a couple more minutes before we get started. Um, and in the meantime, I do want to tell you guys that we might be having a giveaway tonight. I always say this in the beginning. Um, Alex, I don't know. What, what do you think? You know, are we, are we not? It's always a mystery. Sometimes we do. Sometimes, sometimes a mystery is fun. Exactly. We like to keep you guys in suspense. So we might be having a giveaway tonight. And the way that you enter the giveaway is by commenting in the chat. So at the end, we're going to pick someone uh, from the comments using a random comment picker. Um, so the more you comment in the chat, the more chances you have of getting this giveaway. So I really encourage it. And also, um, while you guys are hanging out, if you could give us a thumbs up on the feed and also give us a follow on Facebook, we would really appreciate it. And also, um, you might get extra points for that. I don't know. We'll see. Just handing out the bribes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I like to sneak it in there a little bit. <laughs> okay, well, someone has their Malbec Merlot combo. I like it. They understood the assignment. Assi <laughs> they definitely understood the assignment. Okay, guys, so before we start, we are going to start off with our Creatively Pledge. So I'm going to ask you guys this time to raise your pencil or whatever you're using for the tracing in the air. And please repeat after me. <clears throat> Let's do it. 
I promise. I promise. To relax and have fun. To relax and have fun. To not judge my painting. To not judge my painting. Or the painting of others. Or the painting of others. And to be fearless. And to be fearless. And we're ready. Cheers. Boom. The fearless part is especially important for this painting because it looks a little bit intimidating at first, but I promise it's not. And we're going to go through it step by step. And also the, the wine does help with the fearlessness, I would say. Okay, Alex, you ready to get started? Born ready, coach. Let's do this. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to take the tracing paper, the graphite paper, we're going to put it around the middle of our canvas, and then we're going to take the design outline and put it on top. You know, sometimes I get this wrong and I mix it up and put it the opposite way, but it didn't happen this time. Oh, you know what I forgot? Okay, we're going to pause for a second, guys. I want to show you the easel. Always a step that I forget because I never see it here. It's such an so undervalued, exactly. but like massive and I'm, thing. I'm seeing it right in front of me, but for some reason, it just didn't register. So guys, if you purchase the Creatively box with everything you need for this painting, you could actually make an easel out of the box. So all you do, and let me switch my, let me try to switch my cameras for a second. So all you do is you fold the lid back and you put a piece of tape on this side and then on this side, and then you could put your painting right in here and it becomes an easel and it stands pretty sturdy on the table. And if you want, you could also just tape it to the table if you want some extra support, but you totally don't have to. And this way um, you could see your painting from a distance and it really helps you. So thank you, Alex, I reminded myself. Got your back, Jack. <laughs> Okay, so now we're ready. Okay, so I am gonna begin by tracing this. So I'm gonna position the Eiffel Tower kind of not perfectly in the middle because I feel like that makes a better composition. So you don't want the Eiffel Tower to be completely in the middle. It's a little bit off to the side. So for me, my paper is pretty much in the middle and that makes the Eiffel Tower a little bit off to the side. So I'm just gonna roll with that. And just remember guys, this is just a guide for you. So if you want to have, you know, more street lights, if you want to have your people elsewhere, you are more than welcome to change it up any way you like. And this is just a way to kind of help you initially. So I'm just going to hold this down and I'm going to begin tracing. Speaking of needing an extra piece of tape, imagine if you can tape the traceable you down. could yeah you could tape the traceable i usually don't do it um but it does help and the reason that i don't do it is i like to sometimes peek and see if it's appearing on the other side oh um ladies so and gentlemen it is. that is an advanced pro tip that's not <laughs> what we see every month the peeking no So I'm just going to trace this and this is not detailed at all. So this is just kind of the outline of the tower, just so it's not lopsided or kind of too small or too large on your canvas. So it definitely helps. Um, but for those people who are brave enough to draw it on their own, I can't wait to see what it looks like. It's going to look amazing. And Alex, I think this is the first time that we have a painting with an international theme. No, that's not true. We had a when in Rome painting with the wooden door. The second time. Indeed. Indeed. I like <laughs> that you caught yourself there and you didn't I did. even I need almost my I almost forgot about that one. I, I was very proud. So I'm just checking to make sure that it's coming out on the other side.
And now moving on to the street lights. And then the people, and for the people, it's always fun to kind of do your own variation of it. So if you want to have maybe like a mother and child or a family there, you could always change it up. Right now it's a couple and it's a bit more on the romantic side, but you could totally change it up and, and do whatever you want. Um, you could also add a dog in there or anything else that's interesting. I think a, a dog would be a good idea. For what? For the people. To add a dog? That would be fun. <laughs> Joanne's got the right deal with the Shiraz. I love it. Oh yeah, that's a good choice. I like it. So we are using a lot of blue today and a lot of white, and those are our main colors. And then for the red and the yellow, we're only going to be using a little bit. So is that indicating to be sparing on our mixing throughout? You don't have to be sparing because actually in the box I included a lot of white and a lot of blue. So uh -huh. you should be good at you know there I thought go. I thought this through. <laughs> Hashtag planning ahead. <laughs> but you'll you'll probably have a lot of red and yellow left over, if anything. But I do encourage you guys to experiment and be daring with your colors and with this painting in general. So just because I'm using blues and pinks and yellows for my sky doesn't mean you have to do that. You could do whatever you want. This is your painting. So if you want to make it um, a sunrise instead of a sunset or a much darker sky, um, you're more than welcome to do so. And I would love to see your paintings afterwards. Let's see how this came out. A little lopsided. That's okay. We'll take it. Are you going to tell them how they can potentially show us their lovely paintings after as well? Ooh. So if you guys are new to Creatively, we encourage you to share what you created on social, so either on Facebook or Instagram, and you could use our hashtag, which is on the bottom of the screen, Creatively Box, and that way we'll be able to see it and we could share your painting on our social media as well. So definitely don't forget to share what you created um, afterwards. And also, I, I never say this, but I wanna encourage you guys to also be in the shot with your painting. So not just a photo of your painting, but you with it. So we could see you as well. Okay, Alex, you ready? Oh, yes. Are you, are you ready to get to the painting? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so I am gonna grab my large brush. Hold on, let me just check the chat. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna grab my large brush. I'm gonna dip it a little bit in the water. And then I'm gonna make a very light blue color. So I'm just gonna mix a lot of white and then just a little bit of my blue. And I'm just gonna repeat this just in case, but I do wanna encourage you guys to experiment with your colors. So just because I'm using a light blue color for my, my sky right now, you're welcome to go completely rogue and use any colors you want throughout. Maybe it'll come out much better than what I have. That usually does happen. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a horizon line to my painting. So I'm gonna go just right above where the Eiffel Tower ends 
and I'm just gonna draw a horizontal line all the way across. Wow, that was crooked. That's okay, we'll fix it later. So this is my horizon. <laughs> you know, the earth is curved. <laughs> There's some natural ebbs and flows. So my outline right now is pretty light, but um, I'm gonna cover up the sky with paint, but I should still be able to see the outline through my paint. So it's just gonna be a guide. You might not be able to see every detail of your outline, but you'll be able to see most of it. So I'm just gonna continue with my light blue color. And I'm gonna start from the top of my canvas and just paint a blue strip all the way across, um, probably like two to three inches down. So maybe about till here or so. So I'm just gonna cover that area with blue. And you could use just a little bit of water um, to help spread your paint around the canvas. It, it helps a little bit. And I do like this part because it's just very relaxing to just kind of blend the sky and the, the sunset. For me. I don't know for you guys if it's relaxing. I hope so. So I'm just covering up the top part of the canvas. With my light blue, I wanna make sure that I'm covering the actual canvas so that I'm not seeing the white through it. So even if it's a thin layer, it should still not be showing the canvas through it. But I could still see my design outline-ish. And it doesn't need to be a perfect stripe. Did you know? Oh no, tell me. Should we do it? Should we talk about some fun Paris facts? I think so. Okay, so first of all, I've never been to Paris. Okay. Have you? No. It's definitely on our list. But continue. <laughs> Way to <laughs> just veer Tangent. to the hard left from Tangent. the original question. Here, I have a couple. But one will start with as an actual fun fact. The other I might work in as a small trivia sitch. Ooh, is that going to be for the giveaway or I don't no? know. I don't know. Okay, we'll see. Because I like the giveaway, which for people joining late, there might be. Okay. But did you know, and this actually ties together well with our previous that Nicholas Flamel, yes, Nicholas Flamel from Harry Potter was actually a real person, and he was from Paris. Wait, I don't know who this is from Harry Potter. I don't even know what you're talking about. Are you serious right now? Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we've, uh, we've uncovered a whole bigger <laughs> And I did read all of the books. Then, then just Harry Potter. Potter here. Hold on, let's let's pause on this for a second. So I'm gonna add a white strip underneath my blue, and I'm gonna go right into the blue color and blend those two together. So I'm just continuing the white, also for about um, two inches or so down, but I wanna make sure I'm going into the blue and kind of blending them out. So also, um, if you use water, it'll be a little bit easier for you to blend. So I'm starting pretty much from the middle of my canvas, or not from the middle of my canvas, but from the middle of where my sky and going upwards into the blue. So right into this other color and they're kind of blending together and it's a little bit hard to see the white on the white canvas, but it's there.
So, Alex, I do not know who that is. Nicholas Flamel was the, the character that created the, uh, the elixir that lets you live forever, the one that Voldemort wanted to get. It was in one of, like, the first two or three books slash movies. Okay, is it just me, or... I mean, he's not, not a main character. Me. He's, like, a low-key, like, one of the maps that was uh, given, and, you know... Well, we all know you're listening. My memory? Your listening abilities. But believe me, point of story... <laughs> That dear Harry Potter character, Nicholas Flamel, was a good old Parisian. Okay. So I'm just continuing my white stripe all the way across and then into the blue. And I want to make sure that it's not perfectly a blue stripe and then a white stripe underneath. It's kind of all gradually blended. Um, and the way that you do that, you want to make sure that your paint is pretty wet and you go right into the blue color with your white. And feel free to um, raise up the color a little bit higher in one area and then maybe do it a little bit different in another area because it doesn't need to be a perfect stripe. So then I'm actually not even going to wash my brush right now because I don't, I don't have any blue on here. I'm going to take an orangey pink color. So I'm going to try to mix that. So definitely feel free to experiment with your blending and see what color you get. It could be more red, it could be more pink, it could be maybe more yellow. Um, but I'm going to start off with my white and I'm going to add just a tiny bit of red, really tiny bit, and then a tiny bit of yellow. And I'll see what happens. I might need to change it up. But see if you like this color, and sometimes it's hard to tell, but once I put it here, I'll be able to kind of see it better. So I'm gonna go right underneath the white and blend it right into the white, almost till the, till the blue. So the reason that we're putting the white in between is because if you do just a blue strip and you try to mix the orangey color into it, it's going to turn into like a green color. And we don't want to have green in our sky, so we do the white in between those two colors. And then you could kind of take the pinkish color right into the white and pretty much all the way up, right up until you're blue. Maybe I want to make it a little bit more pink. And just remember that with acrylics, you could always cover up uh, whatever you painted. So really there's no way to make mistakes. So if you don't like your color or you don't like where it's placed right now, you could always just cover it up with another color. So right now my color looks a little bit light, so I could add a little bit more red in here and maybe a little bit more yellow and then go back in and make it a little bit darker if I want to. And I'm starting from the bottom here and going up into my color. Validation. Tracy with validation. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Very random, random fact, Alex. Well, you know, we had Hedgewick recently. I'm trying to tie Hedwig. it all together. Edwig. I'm going uh, the extra mile. <laughs> uh, 
Edgewood. So these colors don't need to be perfect. They don't need to be a perfect stripe all the way across. So I'm gonna go a little bit more red for my next layer. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more red and mix it into this color. Maybe that's a little too dark, we'll see. And then I'm just gonna go right into my previous color. So it's all kind of blending together. And you could definitely play around with these colors and you could make them more red or more purple um, or even like a darker night sky would be really cool here. We're doing this. A lot of people find blending intimidating, but it's actually really fun. You think it's maybe like it. if they get the colors over each other, it feels like you're messing up? I think a lot of people are scared to combine the two colors. So they do like one strip of one color and then another strip of one color underneath, but they don't actually combine the two colors because it's like scary for them. So I encourage you guys to go right into the other color and see what happens, because what's the worst thing that could happen, right? And since you use acrylic paint, high quality, you can just paint right over. You could just paint right over. You might need to wait for it to dry a little bit, but that's you why could you got just the paint line. right over. So my last layer, I'm gonna do a yellow color. So I'm gonna take some white with the yellow, and I'm gonna start right with the horizon. So this is a little bit more pink, but that's fine. And I'm gonna go right into my red color. So it's all kind of blending together. So I'm just taking the color and going right into my previous color. And I'm starting from the bottom, so the bottom part of my sky and going up. So the more you go over it back and forth, the more it blends together. Oh, Alex, we have a person from New Zealand. Is this the first time? Welcome, Carol. What time is it there? Is it like eight in the morning? 10 in the morning? Having a little wine it's, with your it's... breakfast? <laughs> I only kid. Are you drinking coffee? So this is looking pretty 
blended to me. And just remember that we're gonna have a lot of things in the foreground. So even if it doesn't look that well blended, it's totally okay because we're gonna be adding a lot of things um, in front of it. So a lot of the sky is gonna be covered anyway. But you could keep on playing around. You could even add some clouds if you want to, maybe a moon or the sun, depending on what time of day it is. Um, you could also add some birds. So definitely a lot of things to make your painting unique. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my brush. I don't know if I'm ready to let go of the sky. I kind of just want to keep changing the colors. Okay, so I'm gonna make a light blue color. So pretty much the same color that I had all the way at the top, maybe slightly darker. And we're gonna do the ground right now. So I'm gonna take some white and some blue. And we're just gonna cover up the ground. So I'm also, I'm gonna start from the bottom of the canvas and kind of go up. And you could even blend it into the yellow a little bit, or you could leave it more of a um, hard stop between the horizon and the ground. So I think I could, I could still see my outline through here, which is good. So I could still see my tower and then the people, even though I'm adding a layer of paint. And it's always helpful to have the sample piece here, just so you could refer to it and see what the painting actually looks like, just in case if you covered something up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just covering up this ground using my blue color. And it's okay for you to vary up the color a little bit. So some spots could be a little bit lighter, some could be a little bit darker. It doesn't really matter. It's gonna be a snowy field. So it's gonna have some variation to it. And I'm actually super excited to get to these trees because they're so much fun. And I think this is the first time we're painting these types of trees. If anyone knows um, what the species is of these trees, I would love to know, but they're super fun to paint, you know? And I'm taking some water just to help me spread the paint around a bit. And this is a little bit darker, so we got a little m bit more of our phthalo blue, would you say? Yeah, it's pretty much the same color as the top, maybe slightly darker. So you could add a little bit more uh, to your white color.
Okay. Looking a little bit crooked. That's okay. So I'm gonna add some variation to my uh, ground right now. So I'm gonna add some darker parts, mostly on the side of my canvas. So I could just take a little bit of the blue and add it into the white. And then just go in here and maybe add a little bit more of this darker color to the bottom and the sides of my canvas. And just remember that if you maybe added too much of it, you could always go back in with the original color, so with a lighter blue, and just cover up some of it. So definitely don't be scared of this step. So I'm actually just taking straight up phthalo blue because uh, right now the paint is wet here, so it just blends right in. Dare you say be fearless? Yeah, well, we're going to get to the fearless part in a little bit because we are going to get to the tower next. So definitely going to need, um, need a little bit more wine for that one. So I'm just adding some dark sections to the side. And then I want to add some lighter sections to the middle area here. So I could just take some more white and then make an even lighter blue color and add this to the middle part. And it's kind of going in random parts here. So just you're just continuing these horizontal lines and making them kind of scattered. You don't want it to be too even, so you don't want to have like a perfect column in the middle. You want your lines to be varied. And you could go back and forth a little bit. So let's say I put too much of this lighter highlight. I could go back in here with the darker color and just add back some of the shadows. And our canvas is completely covered, so we're like, we're almost done. We're almost done here. So this is looking almost finished right now. So I'm just adding a little bit more of these shadows to the side. And some of these strokes are pretty short and then other ones are a little bit longer, but they're all pretty much horizontal. Okay. I think I'm ready for my tower. Here we go. Alex, what say you? So I'm going to put this brush down. I'm just going to clean it a bit, and then put it down here on my napkin. As one of so, my good friends would say, damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead. I like it. Wow. Okay, guys, so for this one, you're welcome to use a uh, double zero. I have a double zero brush here, which I actually gave out in uh, one of our previous subscription boxes. Um, so if you have this brush, you could use it for this step, or you could use the number four brush. Um, so I think I'm probably going to use the number four brush for now, because I don't want to get too detailed yet. So I'm going to make a light blue color for this. So it's going to be pretty much a little bit darker than this sky color, because you want your tower to be seen so it's just going to be maybe a shade or two darker than this sky blue 
And you could always try it out on your canvas, see if it's light or dark enough, and then adjust it. So let's see what happens. So I'm just gonna trace the shape that I had um, on my outline. So I might uh, move this to the side a little bit. Lower this. So first deep breath, we can do this. All right. So I'm just starting to trace my shape here. So this might be a little bit dark. I'm gonna lighten up the color just a little bit. And if you can't see uh, your outline, you could always just use this reference here. Or actually you could use even this reference because it's much simpler. So you could see there's two boxes on the top here plus a triangle. So it's broken up into pretty easy shapes. So I'm gonna do another box here. And then a thin triangle at the top. And then I'm gonna do the two columns on the sides, so the two sides of the tower. I'm excited for the potential trivia moment. When are we gonna do this? I don't know. Should we talk about it? Let's talk about it. But maybe not during this part where we're like concentrating so hard. Oh, not at all. This is not the time. People <laughs> cannot be ready at their keyboard. They have to be ready with the paintbrush. So sometimes I'm dipping my brush into the water because it helps make the lines even thinner. So I have a rectangle here underneath and then another uh, two columns here. So this is for both of the legs of the Eiffel Tower. And I'm continuing to use a pretty light blue color just because I want the tower to be in the distance. So it's kind of fading out a bit. Um, so that way we don't need to worry too much about the detail. Is everyone breathing? Okay, so we have the top floor, the middle floor, and then we're now doing the ground floor. So did you know that the Eiffel Tower has three levels? I learned this while, three? while drawing it. Is the But you could actually see it. You could see it in the drawing. Yeah, I see it. And I think all three are observatories. So you could see it from different heights. You could see the entire city. I don't think I'll be able to go past the second one <laughs> without, like, passing out.
Alex does have a fear of heights. Man-made, man-made heights. Be specific. What if I told you that this wasn't man-made? Would you like to elaborate on that? No. <laughs> Just what if I told you it wasn't man-made? I would ask you to elaborate on that. <laughs> okay, so I have the basic shape drawn out. So this is exactly the shape from the traceable. So if you want, you could even leave it like this, but we're gonna add some more detail to it and the detail is gonna be very easy. It's literally gonna be just horizontal lines and crisscrosses. And we can all do horizontal lines and crisscrosses, right? Okay. So I'm gonna keep using the same color. So I want it to be like a light to medium blue. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do horizontal lines pretty much equally spaced all the way up the tower. So I'm just gonna start at the bottom here and leave a little gap. So it's probably like half an inch or so on my canvas. And then I'm gonna start with the second floor and the same thing. So I have some horizontal lines here. And then I'm just gonna go up. So it's kind of like these half inch lines all the way up the tower. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna mimic this. If I have a line on one side, I'm gonna add it on the other. And then going up to the top level. So all I'm doing is I'm adding these horizontal lines. Oh, you know what I, I just missed? I actually missed this horizontal piece um, in the middle of the tower. So there's two rectangles here. So I'm just gonna add one more underneath. So I don't know if you guys can see it, my sample piece. So there's actually two rectangles here. So I'm just easily gonna add another one right underneath here. So this is just my second rectangle, super easy. I don't know if you could see it. And as you could see, my tower is pretty messy. My lines aren't perfect at all, um, but it, this is gonna be in the distance, so you're not really gonna be able to tell. So cool to see the stages of it coming together. Oh, you just wait. Just realized my camera is super crooked here on the camera. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a vertical line on level one and two only. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a vertical line on one of the legs. So, just a vertical line here. And it's actually, it's not even vertical, it's like a little bit of a curve just because it's following the tower legs. So it's gonna be on the first level and on the second level. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So just right in the middle of this leg, I'm just gonna do a line. And we're, we're almost done with this tower. So now the next step is really gonna bring everything together. And this is gonna be the crisscrosses.
Wow. Okay, let me just move this up and try not to make it so crooked for you guys. Okay, so for the crisscrosses, same color. So this entire tower is kind of the same blue color. I'm just gonna add an X in the middle of each box. So I'm gonna start from the bottom. So this is my first X. So I actually have only two X's on the bottom level. So I'm basically adding an X to each box. And we could all do this shape. And it doesn't need to be perfect at all. And then I'm just going to go up this tower with my X's and O's. Just X's. Was that a dad joke? <laughs> oh, man. How is everyone doing? I feel like we're concentrating so hard. I wonder if how many refills the Eiffel Tower has caused. Oh, you just reminded me. There you go. There you go. Importante. Importante. You do want a steady hand, though, for this. So I'm just going up and adding these X's and I'm just sometimes dipping my brush a little bit into the water just so I could get a thinner stroke and it does help sometimes. So this is coming out pretty good and kind of coming together with these little X's. You're trying to restrain yourself so badly. I can see it in you. You just don't want to say it. <laughs> this is what it's looking like right now. So then I'm going to add some windows to these rectangles that I have. Uh, on each level. So the windows are going to be just vertical lines going across your box. So I actually I'm going to start at the bottom. And let me just make this line a little bit darker. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few lines to this rectangle. And these are going to be my windows. So check this out. So all I did was I just added some vertical lines here to this level. And I'm going to do the same thing here and then all the way at the top. We got this. Wow. Is it making you nervous? I'm sweating. <laughs> I don't know, I find this um, level of concentration very therapeutic. Is it just me? I don't want to say that it's just you. 
I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. <laughs> You're always supposed to agree with me, you know that? This is the, the first rule of improv. Is that what we're doing here? So you could go back in here, you could fix some of your lines if you want to. And then I'm gonna add some X's to this middle box right here. So I'm gonna do three X's in each box. Sorry, I'm gonna do one X in each box for a total of three X's. I feel like we're, we're very mathematical tonight. You know how I love the precision. <laughs> There we go. So all I did was I just added three X's to the middle area here. And then you could darken up this part on the bottom because that's pretty much um, the bottom area. So I'm just gonna darken this up a bit. So it kind of looks like that. And there we have our Eiffel Tower. And feel free to go over some of these lines, but just remember that you want your Eiffel Tower to look like it's in the distance, so you don't want to make it too dark. And if some of your lines are a darker blue, you could always go over them with a lighter blue and lighten them up a bit. We did it. Okay. So now for the fun stuff, not, not that this wasn't fun, but now we get to relax a little bit, not get too detailed. Okay. And thank you, Natalia. See, Natalia already did this and she said it was easy and I agree. Okay, we're gonna take our large brush Easy peasy, lemon Easy squeezy. Easy peasy. And we are going to create some trees in the background here. So these trees are really far away. We can't really see them um, in detail. So they're almost going to look like bushes in the background. So I'm going to take the same blue color that I have here. It could be maybe a little bit darker if you want, but it's pretty much going to be the same as this color. And we're gonna add some quick strokes to this area. So going quickly all the way across, kind of varying up the heights a bit. And these are gonna be our bushes. And don't be afraid to go right into your sky, right into your ground, and then also right into your tower. So you're covering up the bottom of your tower with these short strokes. Should we do a random bonus points trivia question? We should, let's do it. Not for the giveaway, just, just for fun. For, just for fun? And just for funsies. I'm scared. Is it multiple choice? No, it's not. And it's you're not answering. Okay, but no Googling, guys. 
Are we are we gonna count down like maybe ten seconds to make sure people don't Google? Ladies and gentlemen, we here at Creatively believe in integrous trivia answering. Wow, do we now? We certainly do. Okay. So in our lovely Puri theme, during the Roman era. Paris was a founded settlement. What was its original name? Wow. Did you have to make it that hard? I think that different people would have wow. different opinions. Wow. Is anyone on... good at trivia? Because clearly I'm not. Well, are you much of a historian? I mean, I know some stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I rest my case. <clears throat> so does anyone know does I'm anyone know any this was a hard one you had to start off really hard well i mean woof You couldn't have done, like, how many levels does the Eiffel Tower have? You know, it's just something, something easy. You know what? I'll, I'll tell you you're easy. Paris and Rome are twin sister cities. Now, digest that. Oh, yes. I don't even know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, while we ponder that one, which I don't even know what that meant, so we're just creating these bushes underneath the tower. So all I'm doing is I'm creating really short, fast strokes over my tower and then over my... Uh, ground area and it's pretty much the same color as this background and it's kind of just blending into the ground and it's blending in kind of into the sky a little bit so it's just fading into the distance so it looks really messy when you hold it up close um so if yours looks messy too don't worry about it okay and these are my bushes Do we have an answer? We have some guesses. Uh, I'll and say how many points do they get? Because that was such a tough one. If you let me finish. <laughs> None of the guesses have been correct. But don't they get participation points? Oh, Francie. Francie coming up big. Major bonus points. I don't know on the exact I think there was a lot of time to Google. But Lutetia or Lutetia <laughs> is the correct answer. Wow. I'm not going to try to repeat that one. You started off so difficult. Why would you do that? It's to weed out the... I'm crying. It's to, <laughs> to weed out the basics. So that we know what's up. But I do want to tell you guys that if you want easy bonus points, please... Give a like on this stream if you're having fun tonight. And also, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And YouTube. That's a lot. That's a lot to ask of people. <laughs> okay, guys. So what I'm going to do now, this is really going to make this part come to life a bit. So I'm going to add some very thin strokes for my trunks for the trees in the background so the color is going to be just one shade darker than this color that you had for your uh foliage 
So I'm just adding some really thin lines and this is too light, so I'm gonna experiment here. And I'm adding a few lines for the tree trunks and they're going in different directions a bit. And you wanna make sure that the color is pretty light. So it's just one shade darker or so than your color of the bushes. And some of these are closer together, some of these are farther apart, some of these are lower down on the canvas, and then some of these are a little bit higher up. So it looks like they're more in the distance. And you wanna make sure your lines are pretty thin. So I'm barely touching the canvas here. And this is giving kind of a cool effect. What do you think, Alex? I like it. I like what we're putting down so far. And you guys should be super proud of yourselves for trying something new, challenging yourself and not being too intimidated by this. So I just have a few lines here and there. There we go. Okay, and keep in mind, most of these lines are gonna be covered because there's gonna be something in the foreground. So don't um, worry about them too much. Not that anyone's worried about anything right now. Okay, so I think we are gonna move on to our first tree and I'm super excited about this one cause it's just, it's so much fun to paint and you could just really go crazy with the branches. So I'm gonna start with the tree that's gonna be on the left side here. So keep in mind guys, um, you're more than welcome to change the position of your trees. So I'm gonna have three trees in my painting, but you could add a lot more here. So you could make it more of a park um, or you could maybe add just two trees if you want, cause this one's kind of hanging out in the background. It doesn't really need to be there, but it's really fun to paint. So we'll see. So I'm gonna use a dark blue color. So this is my phthalo blue. If you guys are using a lighter blue, you might wanna add a little bit of black to your color. So I'm gonna start off with the trunk. So this part is gonna be maybe about an inch or so um, from the bottom of my canvas. So I'm gonna create this crooked curvy line going almost to the top of my canvas. And you wanna remember that your branches are gonna thin out at the top. So you wanna make sure that your lines are getting a bit thicker, uh, sorry, thinner as you go up. So this is my first line and then I'm gonna add another wavy, curvy line going up. And you could try to use a little bit of water just to thin out your line. So I'm applying really light pressure to my canvas. And then I'm just gonna keep adding more and more lines 
and getting pretty crooked with them. So they're all starting from the same place and then spreading out pretty early on. And this is the type of my tree. So it doesn't have a really long trunk, but the trunk is pretty short and then the branches come out pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna keep going in different directions and you could feel free to overlap your tower a bit. Alex, do you want to give us an easier one? While we're doing this tree, what do you think? I think I'll have to look one up now, jeez. <laughs> So we're adding maybe six or seven large branches from the bottom here. So I'm just gonna keep going. And the ones that are coming out of the very sides of the tree are gonna be a bit shorter than these ones that are in the middle, if that makes sense. So these ones are gonna be slightly shorter. So you want your tree to kind of have this like oval shape at the top. Okay, I got one for you. Oh God, I'm scared. What is... Hold on, are we ready? For what? To, to listen. <laughs> yeah, are we just like set to type quickly, the answer? Like, are, are we mentally prepared for this question right now? Because I wasn't, I had to like tell myself to prepare. Uh-huh. Okay, now, now we're ready, I think. Okay. What is the official motto of Paris, translated in English? I think it's the city of Louvre. Yeah, that was wrong. <laughs> wow. So the official motto... Hold on. ...of Paris... Wait, are you giving us the answer already? We don't no, even have time I'm to... No, I'm repeating the, the question... <laughs> Calm yourself. So while we're waiting for the answer, so I'm just adding branches to my larger branches. So I'm adding smaller ones as I'm going up the tree. And these lines are also just pretty crooked and jagged and curvy and kind of going crazy and all over the place. So feel free to get really crazy with them and just add more and more branches. So the more you add, the more realistic your tree is going to be. Um, so I'm just going to go up my tree and just make sure that you're thinning out your lines as you go up. And some of them could be overlapping. All right, Alex. Yes. Are you, are you going to tell us or what's the deal? So, I think Crystal kind of came the closest right there at the end. Literal translation, translation I saw was tossed but not sunk. Oh, yes. Tossed. 
but not sunk. Since the crest of the city features the depiction of a ship. Good job, Crystal. Okay, Crystal gets like 20 extra bonus points, I would say. So make sure when you're doing the, the random common picker, you add her name 20 extra times to the list. I'll just add that to the algorithm. I'm just adding these branches as I go. So they're getting shorter and shorter as I go up the tree. And I'm just taking them in different directions, making them really crooked. Some of them are overlapping the tower. And feel free to change up your tree and make it um, totally different. So you could do an evergreen tree if you want. You could do an oak tree. Did you ever figure out the name of this tree? I did not. I was hoping someone would tell us. Do a birch tree. That's all. That's all the trees that I know. What about aspens? You could do an aspen tree. So I'm just adding more and more branches. And your lines don't need to be perfect. They're all crooked and I'm getting really loose with my strokes, just barely touching the canvas and just adding these little lines to my tree. It's hard to know when to stop. But this one. So I'm going to add another one on the right side here. It's going to be slightly shorter than this one. So I'm gonna do the same kind of technique. I'm gonna start from the bottom. So you wanna make sure that this tree is not starting from the same exact horizontal point as this one. You want it to be either a little bit higher, a little bit lower. I'm gonna make mine a little bit higher just cause it's gonna be a little further into the distance. So it's gonna start maybe around here somewhere. And you wanna keep in mind, so I almost forgot about my uh, lanterns. So there's a lantern that's here. So you want to make your tree to the side of the lantern. So I'm going to make it to the right side of the lantern. And I'm just going to start by doing the same thing. So I'm just adding this curvy line all the way up and I'm going to end it um, slightly lower than this one. And these trees are just so fun to make because it just gives you so much freedom with these lines. You can make them as curvy as you want, as crazy as you want. And it just looks so weird initially, but then this tree just, just really comes together in the end. So I'm just starting from the 
very bottom here and just branching it out pretty much right away. And your branches could go um, and overlap the lantern. So don't worry if there's a lantern here, you could go past the lantern. So I'm just adding these little branches. Some of them are gonna be overlapping. Is anyone creating this painting for Valentine's Day? I feel like this would make a really awesome Valentine's Day gift or an activity to do with your, your partner. It's very romantic. So I'm just adding more and more branches as I go. So pretty much same technique as my other tree. Just thinning out the branches as I go up and just adding them in random places. So Judy is saying that this is a tulip tree. I'm just gonna trust what know. she's saying. We have a... Uh, oh, do we have multiple answers? We have a non-consensus on the trees. Okay. <laughs> we have a black locust tree, a linden tree, a birch tree, which I don't believe is, and a tulip tree. I didn't even know tulip trees were a thing. We're going to have to Google all these trees later. So this is my second tree. And so now I'm going to add a third one. So it's going to be small, pretty much in between my two lanterns. And I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter because I want it to be further in the distance. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to my blue color. And I'm gonna make sure that it's a little bit higher up than this one because it's further into the distance. So same technique, I'm just gonna start from the bottom and branch out, all pun intended. And this one's not going to be too detailed. You know how to not quickly find the answer. Go on Google and type different type of trees. Oh, wow. There are way too many to look through. Well, I, I think that images. these could be multiple types of trees. Many trees could look like this. So uh, there's definitely not one right answer. I mean, what?
So I'm just adding more branches to this tree. How's it going, guys? How are your trees coming along? We are pretty much done with this step. So, Alex, you ready for this? Go for it. What are we? So, we're going to take a short pause and I'm going to show you guys our next month's painting, which is the Marge box. Oh, you stop it right now. So I don't know if you saw, we did post it on social um, earlier today. I am super excited about this one. It was on our list for a very long time and we're finally getting to do this. So let me pull it up. So this is next month's painting. So obviously, Starry night, so we are going to be learning Van Gogh's uh, technique that he used. I'm super excited about this one. It's really easy and really fun to paint. Um, and there's a lot of room for creativity. So definitely check out our website. It's the March box. It's called Starry Night, obviously. Um, and it comes with everything you need, all the supplies, step-by-step -step instructions. Um, there's also a traceable available as well that comes in your box. Um, links to the video tutorial, which will be streaming on the next Tuesday of the month, which is um, the first Tuesday of March, which actually, I don't know what date that is, but uh, we're going to post the event probably by tomorrow. So I'm super excited about this one, Van Gogh's Starry Night. Um, and I hope you guys join me for that one. Alex, are you excited? I'm very excited. It's, one, it's my favorite piece of artwork. Is it now? Actually. Is it now? It's okay. Really... Well, I hope you'll be painting with me next time. In my mind, absolutely. <laughs> okay, guys, so now we're gonna color in the lanterns. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna keep using the phthalo blue and I'm just gonna go right into it and just start tracing this lantern. And some of it might be covered with paint, but that's okay because I have my sample over here and I could pretty much approximate where this is gonna end, so I'm gonna make it around here. And again, it doesn't need to be exact. It doesn't need to be exactly as the outline, so you could definitely vary it up a bit. So all of this is broken down into easy shapes. So it's just a bunch of rectangles and some ovals, and that's pretty much it. So this is my lantern, so this is the first one. There's gonna be a line in the middle here, and then I'm gonna color the top part in.
Okay, and then I'm gonna do the second lantern, which is a little bit hard to see, but it's here. So the easiest thing is just to start with the post. So I'm just gonna create a vertical line going all the way down. And this one is gonna start uh, further down the canvas. So it's gonna be maybe an inch or so from the bottom or maybe even further down than that. So all we're doing, we're just doing a vertical line. And this one, because it's in the front, it could even be thicker than the one that we just did. And if you want, you could use a piece of paper or a ruler or something to give you, maybe even this instruction sheet to give you a straight line. I'm just gonna wing it um, because we're not about perfection here at Creatively. But if you want your line to be super straight, you could totally use a straight edge for this. The concentration is real right now. Got to focus in. Crunch time. Trying to throw in as many sports analogies as I can. So it's going to have this rectangular shape at the top. And then a smaller rectangle underneath here. And then a curve at the top, so it's almost gonna be like a half circle at the top and then a little half circle above it. So these are all super easy shapes. So if you don't have the traceable, don't worry because you could break it down into very simple shapes. And then there's gonna be a line in the middle of the actual lantern. Oh, Judy, I love uh, the suggestion. So Judy would love to paint an English cottage with window boxes and lots of flowers. That sounds so lovely. And we actually take suggestions from our, our customers. Um, so almost every month we actually send out a survey before we launch the next box. And we have three themes and People get to vote on the theme that they like the most and the theme that they would want to paint. So actually, um, the Starry Night painting was voted on by you guys. And this is how we came up with this idea. So um, definitely check out the next time we vote on the painting. So we usually send out an email, um, maybe like mid month or so. And if you're not subscribed to our email list, you could subscribe on our website below. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna add shadows underneath the trees and the lampposts. So I'm gonna use a, a medium blue. So it's just gonna be slightly darker than the blue that you have here. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of white to it. And I'm gonna add 
a horizontal line right underneath the tree. So you want to make sure that it's lighter than your tree trunk, but slightly darker than the actual ground. So play around with the color. You could always change it up. And then all of these shadows are going to be facing the same direction. So they're all going to be going um, to the right of the canvas. And this is really going to help ground everything. If you made your shadow too dark, you could always just lighten it up by going over it with a lighter blue color. So we did lose our people a little bit. But that's okay. We'll just recreate them now. So, but before we do that, I do want to add some snow um, to my trees. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my brush. And this part is really easy and really fun. We're just going to add some snow to the branches. So I'm going to take just like a glop of white. Glop? Is that a word? Glop? It certainly is now. <laughs> and I'm just going to go over some of my branches. So usually when you see uh, snow over trees, it's usually on the tops of branches and in between. So in the V shapes, that's where you would see the snow pile up. So I'm going to add it in between those branches. So into these V shapes and at the top of these branches. So I'm just adding it right over these lines, but I don't want to cover up the branches themselves. I want to just add it kind of next to them. And definitely want to get it in between these V shapes. And this is actually a nice way to thin out some of your branches. If your branches are too thick at the top, you could just add white over it and thin them out a bit. And this is just really going to add a cool dimension to your trees. Exactly, because before the white, it could have been just pretty much any season. Sorry, I was on mute there for a minute. The seasons, as you so aptly agreed <laughs> with me, are changing right before our eyes. So I'm just going in and adding the white to the tops of my branches. And into these V shapes.
and I really can't wait to see what you guys create. I hope that you post it um, and tag us so we could see what you've done. And that's always the best part, just seeing how different everyone's painting comes out. And you want to get the snow um, even at the bottom of the tree, but in between these branches in the V shapes, because that's usually where the snow would pile up. Should we discuss the elephant in the room? Which is? We have a giveaway. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> Mysterically. But do we? But What's do it for? we? What is... Should I, say, should I say what we're giving away? I haven't... I, I, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> so guys, we... we do you have a giveaway tonight? I'm super excited about it. This is something that I just like um, decided on rather um, recently. And this is the first time that we'll be giving this away. So I'm super excited. It's like a totally new item. Um, so tonight, should I say what it, what I it would be? I think you should. Should I say what it would be? Wow, the buildup, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so we will be giving away an original creatively painting of your choice so, yeah so this is huge because we've never done this before so it's going to be an original painting um painted by me signed by me um and yeah and we'll send it to you as a giveaway so you'll have an original piece in your home or you could gift it to someone, which is always exciting. Yay. So and how do they enter in said? So, so the way that you enter the giveaway is um, commenting in the chat, giving us a like in the feed, um, and then following us on Facebook. We will be picking someone from uh, the comments using a random comment picker. So Alex is going to do that um, when? Shortly? Shortly. And I do want to preface this, and I apologize in advance. Right now, we're only able to ship in the United States. So um, if you're not in the United States and you end up getting picked, we could send you a digital version of one of our paintings with the step-by-step -step instructions, um, link to the video tutorial, sample piece, and design outline. So we could do that if you are not in the United States. But if you are in the United States, then we'll send you one of our original paintings. What, what?
Alex, is it time to flood the feed or not yet? Oh, baby, they should definitely flood the feed. They should have been flooding the feed. Hashtag flood the feed. Ladies and gentlemen, comments in the comment sections. Let's get those entries going. An original piece. First time the ever. Artiste herself. No one has owned an original creatively piece yet. Okay. Okay. I'm nervous. Let's see what we got. We got Judy, Miss Judy Prather. Judy! Judy, please be from the U.S. Judy, are you in the U.S.? Are you here? Are you still here? Judy Pre Prether? Where are you at, girl? Prather? Is that what you said? P-R-A? Yeah, I did. If Judy's not around, we're going to have to pick a different person. Hold on, let's give This it is the benefit of sticking around for a while. This is true. You got to stay till the end or to, till the name's call. You got you to gotta be there. All right, Judy, you have another 10 seconds. Maybe 20. Maybe 20, and then we'll have Maybe to... Maybe Judy's taking, like, a drinking break. You know? 20 seconds. And then we'll be choosing another one out of the hat. Okay, Judy Prether, are you in the house? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Alex, should we give it another five seconds? We're, we're going to have to make our way to the page. We're going to have to choose ourselves another winner. Oh, I feel bad. Judy, I'm so sorry. Judy, we're sorry. Wish you were here. Or stayed. Or stayed. Da, da, da. Okay. Okay, Alex. Hold on, we're picking. Let's we're picking. Do this. Okay, we got uh, Miss Joan Butters. Joan Butters! Joan. Joan, I, please tell us you're here. Please tell me you stuck around and you're from the U.S. If she's not from the U.S., we still could give something. We'll try. Joan Butters, are you in the house? <gasps> no. Yes, yes! Joan, Joan Butters! Woohoo! Great success. Congratulations, Joan. Congratulations, Joan. You get to own an original Creatively piece. We will contact you after this um, to see which one you want. We got options. Very oh, yeah. excited. And Joan, where are you from? Okay, Joan, let us know where you're from, but we are going to continue. So I have added the snow um, to my trees, and now I'm going to add the people. So if you guys can still see people um, through your paint, that's great. Um, I can't because I covered it up, but that's okay. So Ooh. we are just going to add them. Wisconsin. Joan is from Wisconsin. Woohoo. Okay. 
I'm, I'm very excited for Joan. I wish I was Joan right now. Okay, Alex, you ready for this? So we have the people now. Okay, so we are gonna add um, the people. So we're gonna have a couple over here. So I said this in the beginning, you guys are more than welcome to change it to um, different types of people. So you could do um, a family, you could do like a parent and child, you could do a couple, you could do someone walking a dog. So definitely totally up to you, be creative with it. Um, so we are gonna add the head first. We're just gonna go for it. We're just gonna go for it. So we're just blocking out a shape and feel free to use your um, sample piece here as a reference. And you could always change up this shape later, but this is gonna be my first person. He's gonna be wearing a coat. And I'm not adding too much detail, so this is just a head and then a long rectangle for the body. And then I'm gonna add some feet. And he's gonna be strolling along. And I'm gonna add a little, uh, little hat on top. So this one actually looks like a beret. Um, but you could do any type of hat. You could do a fedora. You could do um, regular hair. So this is my person. And then I'm going to add another one next to him. So same thing. So I'm going to start with the head. And I'm going to... Just do it up close and you could tell that there's not a lot of detail here. So it's just a circle for the head and then a longer rectangle for the body and then some legs. So the same thing, I'm gonna add the torso. And then maybe this one is gonna have the arm. And maybe this one's gonna be a longer coat. And then we're gonna have the legs. And so I made my arm very long. So I could totally fix that by going in here and just adding some lighter blue color for my background and just kind of uh, taking it out. So I just added back the background color and now the hands is much shorter. And I could also use this color to fix up the shape of the person. So there's not a lot of detail here. I'm gonna hold it up for you guys. Not a lot of detail at all. So if I want, I could add a few more figures in the background. So just remember that if they're farther away, they're gonna be lighter. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my color. And also because they're farther away, they don't have that much detail. So it could literally be just a rectangle in the background.
So the farther away they're gonna start higher up on the canvas and they're also gonna be smaller. And I could add maybe another two figures even more in the distance and they're gonna be even lighter. Just strolling in the park. So if you could see it up close, like they don't have any detail at all. It's just like a, a rectangle for both of them. So they definitely don't have any faces. They don't have any features at all. So it's just a rough shape. And then the most important thing that we need to add is the shadow underneath them and this will really ground them. So the same thing that you did with the trees, I'm gonna add a like medium blue shadow underneath these people and it's also going in the same direction. So it's also going to the right side of your canvas. You wanna make sure that your shadow is lighter than the figure but a little bit darker than the ground. So we were able to do this even without the traceable. So kudos to you guys for being brave and just trying something new. And the shadows in the background are gonna get even lighter. So the people that are all the way in the back, their shadows are gonna be barely visible. So I'm just adding very light shadow underneath them. So we're almost there guys. We have about two more steps left, two and a half. So I'm gonna add the lights to these lanterns. So I just wanna make sure I wash my brush. And I'm just gonna take straight up white and color in these lanterns here. So I'm just coloring in these two sides of the lantern. And feel free to try out making it yellow if you want. So ours is gonna be white, um, but I think yellow could look really cool here as well. It'll give it a little bit of mood lighting. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So this is really coming together. So my favorite part of the painting is the pretty much the last step. So it's gonna be the snow. And Alex, do you remember how we do the snow? Do you remember this technique? It's like the most fun and messy technique. Oh yeah. Um, if you have a computer or phone next to you, you might wanna put it a little bit to the side. Get your bibs out. Get your, get your smocks out. It's about to get really messy here. So there's a few different techniques for the snow. Um, I'm gonna show you two of them and then I'll tell you about the third one and you could pick which option you want and which one works better. Um, so I prefer this technique. So I basically, I'm gonna wash this brush right now. I'm gonna take my large brush and I'm gonna make sure that it's clean. So I'm gonna dip it into the white 
And then I'm gonna dip it a little bit into my water, just a little bit and wring it out. And then I'm gonna create a crisscross shape. So I'm gonna put my small brush on top of the large one. And I'm gonna practice on my, on my palette paper first, just so I could get the groove of it. And then I'm gonna move on to my canvas. So especially if you're doing this for the first time, I advise you to practice on your palette first and then move on to the canvas. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna move this up a bit. So I'm just gonna hit my large brush. Okay, so this looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit it and I'm getting some of the snow onto my canvas. So this is one of the techniques. So I'm dipping it into the white, dipping it just a little bit into the water. And sometimes it helps for you to change your water and have clean water here. And this way it looks even brighter when you add the snow. So I'm gonna practice on my palette paper and then take it up. And just sprinkle this white paint all over. So it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, but it's here. And I'm just gonna keep going and it depends on whether you want your scene to look like a blizzard, whether you want it to look like just light flurries, totally up to you. So this is one technique. You could also take a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and do the same thing. So you put a little bit of white paint on it and then you just sprinkle it with your finger. And this actually gives you a little bit more control over your paint. Um, but some people don't have old toothbrushes lying around. So if you do, definitely try it out. And then another option is to take just your large brush and to use your finger. So this one's a little bit more messy. So you use your finger and you just sprinkle the paint on. And this also gives you a little bit more control. So try out two or three of the techniques and let me know which one you like best. Um, I do prefer the two, two brush method, um, but you could also just take your brush and just add some snow here as well. And you're gonna vary up the sizes of your snowflakes. And definitely you could overlap your Eiffel Tower, you could overlap some of your branches and even the people. So you could add some snow on the ground as well. So I do want to remind you guys to please share what you created. You get bonus points if you are actually in the shot. So if you take um, a photo of you and your painting, definitely get brownie points for that. Um, and then please give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We're really trying to grow our brand and you guys are definitely helping with that. And then if you guys had a great time tonight, please feel free to leave us a review on Facebook. It really helps build trust for our brand and really helps us grow. So we would really appreciate you taking maybe 20 seconds or so to leave us a review. And that was pretty much the second to last step. So the last step is gonna be to sign your name on the canvas. Um, usually I sign my name on the bottom, but feel free to pick a different spot. Your signature is a part of the artwork, so definitely plan it out and make it nice. <laughs> so thank you guys so, so much for joining. I thank hope you, you have everyone. fun tonight. Um, it is a Tuesday, so thank you for coming out and showing up and trying something new. Always appreciate it. 
um, and we'll see you on the next Tuesday of the month to paint our Van Gogh Starry Night painting, which I'm super excited about. Oh, yes. Subscribe, follow. We'll see Subscribe you. and follow. Thank you, guys. And um, the winner of the giveaway will be reaching out to you shortly. Bye. Bye.